session so uh, first of all uh, I'll uh, briefly explain where cloud stands today and then uh, what we do with WC cloud so different segments of WC cloud mainly the platform as a service offerings that we provide and our WC2 public cloud uh, solution and finally the WC2 managed cloud so uh, where does cloud stands today so to start with, uh, cloud computing, uh, Gartner defines it as uh, if we do uh, computing with scalable and elastic features uh, using internet technology, so that can be considered as uh, cloud computing. So compared to traditional computing, the main difference is that we bring in scalability and elasticity into the uh, uh, system. So uh, in 2010, Gartner uh, mentioned that so the cloud computing at its peak. So uh, this is according to Gartner emerging technology hype cycle. So after five years, if you have a look at it again, you can see that so now cloud computing has moved uh, uh, away from its peak, and now it's moving towards its enlightenment. So maybe within another two to five years, so cloud would be used in most of the organizations in the industry more widely. So uh, what are the main categories of cloud? So you may all know about the, the services-based categories. So to start with, infrastructure as a service, where we provide virtual machines and uh, infrastructure uh, on demand as a service. Then on top of that, we have the platform as a service, where we run a platform on demand uh, with uh, scalability features. Then on top of that, we can run a software as a service solution. So in addition to that, if we consider where we deploy our cloud, so we can consider whether to do a private cloud with a, a private dedicated uh, infrastructure or whether we are going to go for a public cloud where we use an existing public cloud to build our cloud solution or we use a combination of both. Then again, uh, it may also change, uh, differ depending on the way we are going, who is going to do the deployment. If it is uh, the organization itself going to do the deployment, it might be self-hosted. Or if the organization is going to outsource the deployment to some other organization, so that might be a third-party hosted. We call that managed cloud. So uh, coming to WS2 middleware stack, so uh, we have a complete middleware platform, starting from security, integration, API management, analytics, IoT, dashboards, and many more. So if we need to build a solution using WS2 middleware stack, so there are many options uh, where we can do that in the cloud. So as of today, uh, if we need to build an on-premise platform as a service solution, so WS2 provides uh, two different platform as a service offerings, which are Apache Stratos and Kubernetes. And we are also planning to uh, provide uh, uh, artifacts to run WC2 products on Cloud Foundry, Mesos, and OpenShift. So we are currently doing some research on those areas at the moment. Then uh, the public cloud. So uh, this is available today. So uh, currently it uh, provides two different uh, features. One is for hosting APIs and doing API management in the cloud. So uh, then. The next is to do application development and hosting in the cloud. So the third solution is WC2 Managed Cloud. So if uh, an organization needs to use WC2 products, and if they don't want to host the solution themselves, if they want WC2 engineers to do the deployment, manage it, and uh, do all the installations and everything, so WC2 uh, does that for them, and we call that solution WC2 Managed Cloud. So WC2 Cloud covers uh, uh, mainly uh, it doesn't provide an infrastructure as a service. Other than that, everything else we provide. So it can you can use build a platform as a service using WC2 Cloud, and on top of that, you can build a uh, software as a service solution. Then uh, you can either do it self-hosted or uh, third-party hosted, or you can also go with private, public, and hybrid solutions. 
Then moving on to WC2 pass offerings. So uh, Apache Stratos uh, uh, was originally developed by WC2, and later on we donated it to Apache with the vision of uh, uh, broadening the uh, community and the, uh, bringing in new ideas to uh, uh, improve the platform as service solution. So later on, we uh, uh, implemented artifacts to run WC2 products on Kubernetes. And Stratos also provides support for Kubernetes uh, uh, as, as a means of running Docker containers. Now uh, we are doing research on uh, Cloud Foundry and Mesos. And in the future, we are, trying, we, we are planning to uh, provide support for OpenShift also. So the OpenShift latest version actually runs uh, Kubernetes inside. So it's around 90% Kubernetes. So uh, they have wrapped it uh, with a, a new API and a new set of features. So we are planning to look into that as well. So uh, what are the core features that we would uh, need to run a middleware product on a platform as a service solution? So mainly, uh, the first reason why we move to a cloud is to get uh, scalability. So first of all, we may need uh, auto-scaling, auto-healing features. And uh, then we might need to have uh, cluster discovery. So what is a cluster? So when we set up a WC2 product in production, if you need uh, any clustering features, such as, say, uh, caching, uh, sending cluster messages to uh, do some distributed processing. So if you need so that those uh, types of features, then you might need to set up a cluster. So a cluster would uh, be created by uh, connecting different servers together. So each server might have to communicate to each other. So in a pass solution, you might need to have a feature to automatically discover that without uh, manually configuring it. Then uh, we might need dynamic load balancing. So why we need uh, dynamic load balancing? So uh, if you're manually spinning up instances, we would know exactly what's the IP address and what are the ports that would they expose, so we can configure a load balancer manually. But if you're doing this automatically on a cloud, so we would not know uh, the IP addresses or any of the details of those servers until they are created. So then uh, in runtime, we need to configure a load balancer. So that feature is uh, called dynamic load balancing. So we might need extensions to uh, automatically configure load balancers on the fly. Then uh, we would, of course, need uh, virtual machine support or container support. Then uh, maybe multi-tenancy. So it's not mandatory, but depending on the requirement, uh, we might either need to use con in-container multi-tenancy or in JVM multi-tenancy. Then uh, how do we distribute artifacts? Say I have an application server deployed in uh, a cloud solution. Then how do I send my WAR file or my uh, web apps to the uh, existing deployment? So that we call as artifact distribution. So there should be a way to do that. Next. Uh, once everything in place, how do I uh, monitor my deployment? Whether I can, uh, is it possible for me to log into each server and see the log files of each server? Practically might not be possible. So we might need to have a centralized way of managing logs. Then of course, monitoring and metering. So uh, to give you a brief overview of uh, Stratos, so uh, Stratos can run on EC2, OpenStack, Google Cloud, uh, and Kubernetes. We also provide support for uh, cloud stack. It's uh, in alpha state. So uh, to run something on Stratos, we basically need a cartridge. So a cartridge is either a VM image or a Docker image, which would uh, contain the server and an agent component to run that particular platform. So uh, it has a life cycle. So Stratos would maintain their life cycle. And uh, if you need to send any artifacts, or if you need to monitor the, deploy, monitor the given server or uh, apply a patch. So everything uh, th that is needed to uh, manage the lifecycle can be done via Stratos. So WC2 provide cartridges to run WC2 products on uh, Apache Stratos. So if you go to this uh, WC2 JIT repo, uh, repository, so you will find those cartridges. Then uh, with Stratos, we can do uh, a multi region deployment. So uh, uh, you can map different regions of your infrastructure 
into different partitions of the cloud and then define algorithms to say how we want those uh, partitions or regions to be used, whether those needs to be used all at once or whether I need to do a cloud bursting, likewise. It also supports to do this with Docker. So this is with Kubernetes. So Stratos talks to Kubernetes underneath and then create, uh, use the same interface uh, provided by uh, Stratos to talk to the infrastructure as a service layer. So uh, whether it's with VM or Docker, we can do uh, multi-region deployments with Stratos. Then uh, we can also do, uh, we can also model composite applications. Say I want to deploy a complex application where I would use an uh, application server, a database server, and uh, enterprise service bus. So then I can define the dependencies among them uh, using a modeling language. So this is in JSON. So it also has a UI where you can model it and say how I want my solution to be and how it should be scaled, whether there are like scaling dependencies. When the cluster A scales in a given rate, how do I want my cluster B to scale? Likewise. Then once everything is deployed, uh, you can even see the topology, how servers were created, and their information, the IP addresses, uh, host names, load balancing URLs, and so forth. So those can be seen. So moving forward to Kubernetes. So uh, Kubernetes is a container cluster management system. So it's developed by Google. So uh, Google has uh, over a decade and a half experience in uh, working with container cluster management systems uh, with a project called Borg. So almost all the Google infrastructure and applications run, runs on containers. So they started this project with the intention of uh, implementing a public container cluster management solution that can be used by anyone uh, in the world with Docker and support for many other content technologies. So this is the high-level architecture. So what it provides is uh, a, a cluster of Docker host where you can deploy uh, a set of containers, and then uh, th those can be managed by a Kubernetes master node where it would provide an API to executing uh, operations on the container cluster. So uh, if I want to deploy Tomcat on Docker with Kubernetes, what I can say is, what I can do is, uh, I can create a Docker image for my Tomcat server, and then deploy it on Kubernetes. And afterwards, I can manage the scalability. I can say number of replication, uh, the replicas I want, how do I want those to be load balanced, and uh, whether I need any configurations to be uh, sent in runtime and whether I need to connect any databases to the application server and so forth. So those things can be done. So this is the component architecture. Uh, I may not go into detail. So uh, on high level, uh, how Kubernetes manage containers is that uh, it group containers together and call it a pod. A pod is a group of containers where they share, this, uh, share Linux namespace, namespaces. So, uh, if I want to run a server and another process to monitor that, so I can create a pod with two containers. One runs the server, the other runs the monitoring uh, software component. So it can talk to the same file system, basically, or it can see the same processes. So then once a set of pods are deployed, those can be load balanced with Kubernetes proxies. So uh, they have, in each Docker node, they run a proxy where uh, if I start a container and expose a port, then I can create a proxy service and say, expose this port <coughs> excuse, uh, for a given port number, so then I can access it from outside via the uh, Kubernetes node given with the given node port. So then uh, WS2 uh, ships Docker files for building Docker images for WS2 products. So uh, we actually don't ship Docker images at the moment due to a licensing issue with Oracle. So at the moment, we cannot bundle Oracle JDK and ship it in a Docker image due to Oracle licensing uh, conditions. So for that reason, we ship Docker files. So uh, it's a matter of downloading the WC2 product, the Oracle JDK, and uh, we use Puppet for configuring WC2 products. So it's not mandatory to use Puppet, but what we intend to do with the uh, Docker image is that we cr try to create a Docker image with all the configurations in it. So at the container startup, we don't do any configurations. 
So if I have a dev environment where I want to run a WC2 application server with certain set of configurations, what I do is I create a Docker image for application server for my dev, uh, including all the configurations. That would contain database information. Uh, if it's talking to other endpoints, uh, information about those endpoints. Likewise, we'll put all the information in and create the Docker image. The idea is, if I were to uh, do the configuration on the fly, that would take time. So a container would start in like few seconds. So then the, the server would start in another, uh, say, 10 to 20 seconds. So if we were to do a configuration uh, using an orchestration system at the container startup, that would take another 30 to uh, 40 seconds. To avoid that, what we do is we do everything at the time of the we build the image, and uh, when we start the server, it's ready to serve. So um, for Puppet, we also use Hira. Uh, so Hira provides a way to uh, separate out configuration data from the uh, configuration itself. So it's an improvement for Puppet. So you can also use a Puppet standalone, but uh, recently we sh uh, released Puppet modules for WS2 products. So they include Hira files, where we take the Puppet module and take the relevant Hira files. So in the Hira files, we can put in the configurations needed and then run it, so it would configure the product automatically. Next, uh, uh, how do we do carbon cluster discovery on Kubernetes? So this is uh, what I mentioned earlier. So when running on Kubernetes, what we do is, uh, uh, if we deploy a server, uh, then if you need to configure clustering for that, we make use of Kubernetes services to identify the list of members available in that particular cluster. Then uh, before starting the server, we query that service and get the list of members and add that to the cluster and start the server. So then what happens is uh, we can auto-scale that particular cluster without losing the clustering connection. So that's the important point. If we go with the standard clustering mechanism where all the members would point to set of well-known members, if you lose those members, then the connection of the cluster will be gone. To avoid that, what we do is we do it on the fly, so we can scale as we need without considering any members. We can terminate any members, or we can scale up as we want. So we'll still preserve the cluster. Then uh, this is how we deploy a standard uh, WC2 product on Kubernetes. So we'll have a uh, separate cluster for manager. So manager is the uh, server that runs the UI component. Then we'll have another cluster for worker. Worker is for running the actual load. So here, from Kubernetes point of view, what we do is we create a replication controller which would manage the number of pods we need. So it's a uh, and the definition in uh, Kubernetes, which would say, what's the Docker image I want to use for this, and uh, other metadata, like uh, what are the ports it exposes, for an example, and how many uh, instances I need. So when we deploy the replication controller, it will bring up the given number of pods. Then on top of that, to do the load balancing, we need to create a Kubernetes service. The service would say, what's the actual port in the container? And what's the port? We need to export, it, export that from the Kubernetes cluster to the external world. Then uh, if we consider a much uh, complex deployment with uh, API Manager, so API Manager has different deployment patterns. So here I have considered its uh, distributed deployment where each component has its own cluster. So basically, API Manager has four components, Gateway, Key Manager, store and publisher. So Gateway has uh, two parts, Gateway Manager and Gateway Worker. That's for distributing the API definitions <coughs> Sorry, created by the publisher. So here also what we do is, for each cluster, we create a replication controller and a separate service. Then in addition, he, uh, what we have done here is to do the artifact distribution. We have used a volume mount. So rather than using um, standard deployment synchronizer, on Kubernetes, you can mount a volume. And then whenever an API is created, it creates a Synapse XML file in the manage node. So that will be visible to the workers. Next, uh, this is how we deploy uh, uh, a WS product on Kubernetes. First, we build the Docker image. 
and then get the artifacts, the Kubernetes rep uh, replication controller services, and uh, push the Docker image to the relevant uh, Docker registry. It can be either a central Docker registry or the Docker registry is available in the Kubernetes cluster itself. So each Kubernetes node has a registry. So uh, Kubernetes provides different ways to monitor uh, its health. So uh, first, it provides a UI called kubeui. That's the first one with uh, the circular graphs. Then um, there's another uh, tool called cAdvisor, which runs on each Kubernetes node, monitoring the processes and containers that runs on that. So in addition, uh, it also supports to run Grafana. So, uh, it, what it does is actually uh, it takes data from C Advisor and aggregate using Heapster and write that data to InfluxDB. So that's a persistent database. So on top of that, it can uh, visualize the current status of the Kubernetes cluster, node wise, and then uh, pod wise. So I can go here and query uh, whichever pods I have deployed and what's their memory usage, CPU, disk usage, and so on. So uh, WS2 ships Kubernetes artifacts uh, in this particular uh, Git repository. Still, this is not released, but you can go and uh, have a look. So it has Docker files for building Docker images. Uh, Kubernetes membership scheme, this is for the carbon cluster discovery feature. And then services and replication controllers. We also uh, provide documentation on uh, how to use them. Then moving on to WC2 Public Cloud. So as I mentioned earlier, uh, WC2 Public Cloud currently provides uh, two main uh, clouds. So first is called API Cloud, and the second is called App Cloud. So API Cloud is nothing but API WC2 API Manager, a hosted version. So uh, you can register in WC2 Cloud and get a two-week trial and uh, create a team for you and uh, publish, uh, create some APIs and talk to, maybe if you need to talk to a backend service, if you need to host that, then you can go to WS2 App Cloud and create a sample RESTful service or a SOAP, SOAP service and deploy that and create an uh, entire uh, cloud solution using those two clouds. So uh, we are planning to uh, extend this to uh, identity, device, and analytics in the near future. So uh, in this uh, conference, uh, we also announced that uh, we extended WS2 Application Cloud to support microservices. So uh, uh, it's still not publicly available. So uh, we'll be uh, announcing that soon when it is uh, uh, available publicly. So at the moment, you can create uh, Java web applications, JAX RS services, Spring applications, uh, JAX WS, and Jaguri, and also WS2 data services. So uh, this is a complete solution based on WC2 App Factory, which provides uh, a JIT virtual control management system. So when you log in and uh, create a project, you will get all of these. You'll get a JIT for your project. You will get uh, Jenkins and continuous integration for that. Then you can create databases. And uh, it provides managing your life cycle of the project. You can promote from dev to test, then to prod, and so forth. Then it has a. Uh, uh, issue tracking system, and also features to manage your team. So you can uh, provide access to different team members to do development and to manage the builds and so forth. So Application Cloud also provides an IDE, uh, which is implemented using Code Envy. So uh, this is a very cool feature where you can write your code on the browser itself and compile. Then uh, moving to WS2 Managed Cloud, so uh, Manage Cloud runs on AWS. So according to the requirement of the customer, so we can run it on any uh, AWS region with any given combination of WS2 products. So uh, when the, our customers need to build a solution using WS2 products, so first of all, we'll uh, design their solution architecture and then come up with the products that they would need. And if they decide to go with WS2 Manage Cloud solution, so our cloud team will do the installation on AWS. 
with the support from all the WSO product teams. Then uh, we'll do the uh, deployment of artifacts for them. And uh, if they need to host this in a virtual private network, that's also possible. And if they have any requirements to connect this to their on-premise uh, data center, those are also possible. So almost all the features provided by AWS can be facilitated. So uh, these are the main things that we provide. So uh, at the moment, we run a large number of uh, deployments on managed cloud. Uh, some are on directly on AWS, and some are on Kubernetes, and some are on Stratos. So that's all for my today's presentation. Thank you.